Hey, Crafty Pieces, Angela Holt with Angela Holt's Designs. Today, I'm here to show you how to do an awesome altered mixed media bottle. I did this one about five years ago, and I've had it ever since. And I used um, chains and pearls. I've done uh, some decoupaging on here. And, you know... I was new to the decoupage and new to the um, the design of mixed media about five years ago, and now I'm going to do another bottle, and um, we're going to use a altered uh, a vintage photo I have over my Pinterest board. Uh, we're going to use some chipboard uh, lettering that I've already picked out. And for February, the word is going to be love. And we're going to use some uh, awesome, uh, just different things. This is really, I'm really going to like step up from this one and, and really rock it. I mean, I even used a butterfly from Prima. Do y'all remember those? when they came out so um lots and lots of new design concepts going to go into this bottle and uh we're going to be using some lindy stamp sprays um and everything even i have a color from art anthology i think i'm going to throw in there um this one's called hottie it's a real pretty pink and this is the bottle now this is one of those welches um bought Christmassy, uh, sparkling grape juices or whatever you get at Christmas. And I have saved the bottle. And what I have done is, is I have covered it in gesso. I didn't, I did not worry about taking the label off because I'm going to be covering this. So, um, but again, I covered it in gesso and, um, we're going to get started in applying different textures, mediums, and everything to the bottle. So I'm going to gather up my supplies, and we're going to have fun learning how to do an altered uh, bottle. And again, the reason why I chose love is that it is February, and before I seal the lid, I'm going to write some love notes to my husband and uh when we get older, he can crack open the bottle and read what I had to say. So it's a really, really fun uh, idea. You can do this for a wedding, um, like put wedding wishes in there. And when the couple's ready, they can crack open the bottle or try to fish out all of them um, and uh, read what um, family and friends had said so um we're going to do a lot of tech this can be a lot of technique based class um i would say this is a a newbie uh and seasoned a project everybody can do this when it's rather easy just follow the steps don't be afraid and uh let's get started
Okay, the bottle is dry, and as you can see, there's a lot of texture, and that's what I wanted. I wanted to build up this texture here and everything. And uh, what, now what I'm going to do is I have printed out a vintage photo from my Pinterest board, and it's of a, a beautiful couple. And I'm going to run it through my Xyron Sticker Maker Max here. I printed it on regular uh, computer paper. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel this off, put it on a lightweight cardstock, which is white, and so that I can have some stability and that it will wrap around the jar and uh, be secure. Now, it's just... Now you might ask why didn't I print it on the cardstock because my printer was acting crazy. It wouldn't take the cardstock, but this is a, a cheap, you know, another way of doing it. And then all you're going to do is cut it out. Like that. That's simple. And then I'm going to take my fingers and I'm going to give it a curve like this. Start from the middle and work your way. Give it a little bend there, and now it should be perfect to put on the bottle. Now, this I printed out. Uh, you'll have to scale it down um, in your photo uh, editing software, and it is four and three fourths by three inches on the mark. So. That is a four and three fourths by three inches. And this is what I printed out to put on the bottle there. Okay. So the next steps that we're going to take, I pulled out a bunch of different little tchotchkes here. And I pulled out my molding paste. And all I'm going to do is apply different, uh, using the molding paste, different, um, pieces like buttons here along the top it's almost like um decoupaging or uh doing tiling you know like you do in your home you slap it on and you stick it on there so basically that's what we're going to do we're going to use the uh molding paste to do that so step back watch the process and i'll pop back in for the next step
Okay. Now everything is dry, and as you see, I uh, put the word love on the bottom. I put some buttons on the top. And trust me, ladies, this is a process. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some gesso, and I'm going to paint over some of the areas here of the buttons and paint over the letters and just certain areas. I'm not going to paint the whole thing. So uh, sit back and watch this process, and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm going to have to, my camera is so off. Okay, what I done was I took some of the Prima uh, chalk edgers and I put the color in, dabbed it all around, and then I took some white gesso, the same gesso I used before, and took my brush and blended out the color a little bit. And that's what I've done so far to the jar. Now, I've pulled out some Lindy sprays here. Um, I love Lindy spray. Um, and I pulled out Marigold Magenta Gold. No, Magnolia Magenta Gold. Because I want to give this like a, a pink, red, because it's Valentine to me. Um, and it portrays love and that's what this month is so um what i'm going to do is just simply um lay out some paper towel because i do not want it everywhere and i'm just going to spray in just certain areas just like that now you will have to and will need to protect your photo. So while you're spraying, um, you can get a piece of paper or something like a, a little post-it note like this. I like using post-it notes because they stick like that. And then you can just hold it down and spray like that so new way uh new thing for post-it notes having a pack laying around okay so um 
Now, just go in here, and um, this one is called Rudolph's Red Nose. This will kind of give it. I'm going to spray it in some of the darker areas like that. Um, let's use that one. I also pulled out uh, Plumerina Pink. Plumeria Pink. Ooh, I like that color. Now you're probably wondering, like, well, she's done all them other colors. Well, it is because this is how you build um, your projects. You know, a lot of people ask me uh, about uh, why did you cover that up or why did you do that? It is all about building up um, in mixed media. This one's called Autumn uh, Maple Crimson. Um, you know, and that's the artist. We might start out with one idea and find that as we build, um, other ideas come to life. You know, I mean, it's, it's simply just that. Okay, this one's one of my favorites, Fuzzy Navel Peach. I'm going to have to get another bottle of this because I'm about out. Now, I'm going to stand the bottle up and now... I'm just really going to let this color drain. There we go. And I'm just having fun. That's what you need to do. A lot of people are like, they don't want to break, they, they don't want to attack it. And once you, I think it's kind of like jumping out of a plane. We all fear heights and everything. But once we do it, it's like, which I've never done it before. And I'm not saying I will never do it. You know, I have some daredevil in me. Um, but, you know, once you do that, it's such a... a a liberating feeling um, to your crafting and you're like all right I'm ready to tackle anything if you messed up so what girls I can't tell you how many times I've messed up now this one is a peg leg peat purple um, because red and blue yeah is it red and blue I think it's red and blue that make purple so Purple is a complementary color to red, and this is one of the um, moon shadow mists. It's kind of like a vintage uh, spray, but it has that purple shimmer to it, and that's what I really like. See, all of these colors are really bringing out all of that texture and everything that we built up. So that is what you're wanting to do. I'm going to put a little bit of Cata Lily on there. And then what I'll do is, is I will dry this and then you're going to see what else I do to this bottle. And see, you can fold back the paper if you need to and do that don't be afraid I'm just having fun and I really enjoy because crafting is my therapy honest to gosh it is it is my therapy and I have been through some horrific stuff the past two months I'm telling you, it's crazy. Okay, so now um, we're going to heat gun it, and then I'll come back and show you the next step. Okay, it's all dry, and as you can see, it has different shades of uh, pinks and reds and stuff. Now, 
I'm going to add color and I picked out um, some turquoisey colors. I picked out another purple and a little bit of yellow. And all I'm going to do is simply, I'm gonna lay my bottle down and I'm just gonna get my brush here. Clean my brush up. I love these brushes. These are like, man, I have put these things through torture and they are so reasonable and they are the um, um, Dana Wakely Media. They're from Ranger. Oh my gosh, these things are awesome. I can't wait till she comes out with different. Um, I think she's got four different styles and I just love, I mean, look at that. I mean, I have really put that in torture and it come back to shape just like that. Bam. That's what you want. Okay, um, this one's called C'est la vie Starice. Um, this is from the, uh, it's a flat Fabio. Now, in the Lindy's world, a flat Fabio means there is no shimmer. It's all color. So, and I'm just going to splot it on there, just in different places. I'm going to control this color where I want it. And see, sometimes you can just do that. And then if you hold your bottle up like this, it will have a naturally running um, effect. And that's what I want. So I'm just going to concentrate on bringing that effect in here and I want it to run see now that's beautiful it's starting to run and I'll show you in a minute as you can see all I'm doing is is I'm dipping my brush getting it really saturated with the color and then I'm letting it run I'm only you know just like that see that's all you gotta do watch I'll show you okay watch take your brush go like that and see it naturally just runs and you get those beautiful look how that come out see and that's all you gotta do is just touch it and let it run just like that so that's what you're gonna do with all of these colors so that one was the C'est la vie Um, this one is called Shabby, uh, Turbine Teal, but I'm going to wait on that one. I'm going to add some Jazz and Jab and Purple. Now, this one does have shimmer. This is a Starburst. Okay. And again, all you're going to do, hold your brush in areas like that let it run down now right here close to your photo I would uh, just have a little more control of it see there we go just hold it take it press look at that press let it fall into the, the texture you built on the bottle so it looks like you know it's raining down and you know it's because I really want to jazzy this up all right the next color I pulled out is another flat Fabio and it's a beautiful yellow. It's called Bonjour Butter. Perfect name for this. Just clean, tap your brush off. And what is going to happen is, is that these colors are going to mix and make their own uh, little um, array of things. I live in a colorful world and 
that's how I like to express my love for um, what I do in life. So, and my love of my family, we all love color and, you know, so that's what this represents. When you start opening up with your projects, you're going to start seeing your true artistic soul breathe through them. And you're going to have to let your soul escape. And, and just don't be afraid anymore. Just do it. If you make mistakes, that's life's lesson. But in art, most mistakes turn into some amazing, amazing um, things. And that's what's awesome. All right, and I'm going to spray, uh, let's see, there was one color really, here it is, um, the Magnolia Magenta Gold. Um, I really want this in there because I'm going to be adding some gold. Um, Oh, there we go. Now that, my friends, is pretty dang good. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Love it. Okay, so now I'm going to heat gun this, and uh, so I'll be right back. Okay, so now what I'm wanting to do is I'm just going to take a little bit of that gesso and use your lid as, you know, like a, a tap off or whatever. And I'm just going to lightly brush like this. Now watch. This is... What I love about the long stemmed uh, brushes, you can just do this, and all you have to do is move your finger like this, okay? And see, what am I doing? I'm highlighting very, very lightly like this. See, look, and I'm hardly doing any sort of pressure. Just load your brush lightly and look, see? What this does is it helps add shadowing. It blends some colors. As you can see. And as you saw here, what I done was is I started like this and then I slowly went to my project and that is just a, it's just a way that I like to add a touch of white 
or any color for that matter. You know, see, look, watch. Now I'm going to start pulling it in. Just like that. See? I'm going to be teaching a lot of mixed media classes this year because um, there is a lot of wonderful products out there and a lot of ladies want to transition to mixed media and you know and that's exactly what I'm going to teach. Okay, I'm going to keep going on around, as you can see. Now, that lightened up the process. You can see there. Okay, so now the next thing you can do is you can use two different types of products um, if you want. Uh, I am going to use some of Finnebar's. Um, this is called the Ebony and Ivory Collection. I love her stuff. And I am going to use Inca Gold um, in gold. Because... I want to add some gold highlight to this. Now, before I use my glitter, I'm going to take the same brush and I'm going to tap it into the Inca Gold. Inca Gold is like a paste. It's like a, see, it's a paste. It's a real thick paste. And you're going to take your brush and you're going to do the same thing if you want. You can tap some off here. And you're going to do the same thing that you did with the gesso you're going to do with the Inca Gold. Now what this is going to do, this is going to give your project some gold highlights. And you know, all you have to do is load it like that. And again, with these wonderful mixed media brushes, I mean you can get really into the crevices of stuff and yes i will be fixing these letters so i'm not going to leave them like they are if you're wondering <laughs> i told you this is going to be a lot of steps um but there you go you're just going to brush it in and get into those little crevices again you're just adding character to your bottle and to your project if you're having trouble finding this product let me know um, and I can see about ordering it because I really like it it comes in an array of different colors and um, it is highly used among crafters. And if some of your um, like little pieces from your um, mold and paste pop off, that's okay. I mean, it's just, you know, it was it helps kind of clean the jar up a little bit too so don't worry about that we're definitely going to need to get some of these mixed media brushes that can take this brutal brushing over hard surfaces like this um, you can let me know if you're having trouble finding these I can order them I've have ordered them before and sold them so all right I'll highlight that butterfly really well. Look at that. 
get that little butterfly some gold. Now see how beautiful this is? The gold with the purple and the red and the green and the, it's just gorgeous. Just gorgeous. It's truly beautiful. Lots of color laid in here. Lots. Okay. I might add more later, but right now that is enough. Now, um, for the uh, the glitter, um, this ebony glitter set comes with, you know, black and white, grays, and everything. So, what I want to use is, I want to use... Um, one of these white ones. Um, oop, does it tell me on the box what color these are? Uh, no, it doesn't. This is just a glitter set. It doesn't tell me what the colors are. But it's by Art Extravagant. And uh, one color has more shimmer to it than the other one. So I'm going to use the one with the most shimmer. Um, these are very fine glitters. And uh, now I'm going to get my trusty glue. On these types of projects, I'm just going to use good old Elmer's glue. Okay, you're just going to dip that same brush in your glue. And with the same paintbrush um, technique like this, you are going to brush that glue on like this. All right. Then you're going to take, let me get something to capture all of this. Um, Let's see. Big donut. I should have had a piece of paper. Oh, we'll use this. Okay. Now, very lightly. You don't have to, like, totally. Douse this. But very lightly. Where you put that Elmer's glue. See? Isn't that gorgeous? So we're going to take the Elmer's glue again. You're going to take your brush. And just lightly touch a few areas here. Let's get Take the glitter There you go Isn't that gorgeous? Love it! Love it! Alright, we're going to do this again. Alright. Lightly sprinkle. You can tap your bottle too. And look at that. Isn't that gorgeous. 
Awesome. Finnabar's, um, I'm not going to put this back in the jar because as you can see, um, some of the um, other like pieces that were loose are on there. So um, just note on this process, you might lose a little glitter. And that's why I said do it very lightly so that you don't have to bombard your um, project. I mean, it's just very light. Um, and a little goes a very long way. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out my black gesso, um, my new, my favorite gesso that I'm using right now is by Dino Wakely. Um, and this is the same lady that does those brushes. The reason being is, is because her gesso is really thick and like a paste. And it doesn't have water in it. And the the drying factor is like super fast. I mean like fast. And I really like that. So, and that's because, that's what I painted the bottle in originally. Um, with that type of gesso, that black gesso. So, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get one of her brushes here that are much smaller as you can see the this is the uh, smaller tip brush and um, it's um, beveled and everything so you can get into the little areas so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this jar and I am going to use black gesso on the lettering and what I like to see, all I have to do is squeeze a little bit and begin the magic. Now, the letters I used were chipboard letters that I had. And as you can see, all of them, I used a different one for each letter. Um, because I wanted different texture and different style. Now the chipboard letters are not from a particular company. They, these are from, oh my gosh, Tattered Angels, Tim Holtz. I mean, you name it. Yeah, this is from my stash over 14 years. So um, I cannot directly tell you where all of these came from. But I will tell you, if you find them on sale somewhere, any kind of letters in chipboard or wood or anything, pick them up because even though you're like, I will never use that color, that's not the point. The point is, is that as you see, you can change the color to anything that you need it to be changed to. So, um, just keep that in mind. A lot of people, you know, like I'll never use that and stuff and I'm like no you need to get it seriously so that's why I tell a lot of my um, fans if they see it on sale or something get like two or three packs because you can alter them paint them glitter them make them completely different than what you what they are, are intended for and uh, that's why I pick up letters when I see them I have a huge drawer of chipboard pieces different shapes and letters and styles and everything and I know that when I want to spell out something I can go in there and grab them um, you can also do this to thickers, um, but you will have to gesso the thicker stickers um, first before you can apply different things. That's what I would suggest. Um, gesso is like the base for everything. So, um, so there you go. That's what love looks like. <laughs> like the love bug. The love bug. And then if here, you know, if you got a little bit... Um, you need to clean up some edges around uh, the lip of the jar. You can do so with the extra, which all of this is going to be covered 
but I just want to know it's a clean um, area. And then another thing you can do is really just take your brush and just add a few black highlights to give it that awesome look. Just like that. See? Y'all don't, don't be scared. Just have fun. Okay, so now we're going to clean the brush. And another tool that I would say have in your toolbox um, is a nice um, dusting brush. And what this does is this gets off extra um, loose glitter off your project and still retains the glitter that was on this is when you want to do it when it's dry so it's been it's pretty dry so it's just a brush and I've had this for years my little dog chewed on the handle of it so um, you just want a, a little brush all right so now the next step I'm going to do for you is um, we're going to start decorating the neck of the bottle. We're going to start adding different elements to the neck of the bottle. And uh, so I'm going to get all of that prepared for you. And then I will come right back and we'll finish up this altered jar. So see you in a few. <laughs> 